Hello everybody and welcome to my studio, I'm Simon Leach, it's the 23rd of December and we're just here in the studio and I just wanted to um, show you just, just a few of the pots I've had out of the kiln in, in recent firings. Um, I'll start off with these, these are, are double bowls, um, these just came out of the last kiln. These, we have little, a little disaster in the kiln insofar as I had on the top shelf of the kiln I had some, some um, raw pots, in other words pots that hadn't been biscuit fired. Everything I make is biscuit fired um, and then glazed and then fired again for the glaze firing. Well, I had these in the bottom of the kiln. Anyway, one of the, one of the, one of the pieces that I had in um, on the top shelf, which was a, a raw a raw piece blew up and sent a lot of bits of broken pottery everywhere down, down, falling down through and into the kiln. These were situated on right on the very on the very bottom, and um, they got bits in them. I've managed to grind them out somewhat, and I will probably put a dab of cellars and glaze in here and put them back in the kiln again, and we may refire them. So, what lessons do we learn from that? Be careful if you're putting raw fire, raw clay in a glaze firing. Take it very, very slowly because they can blow up. Especially in a gas kiln, where the heat of the gas of the of the of the of the, of the, the from the burners as it comes up over the top of the kiln, the top of the hill kiln can get very, very hot. Uh, hotter than you think, and it can, these things can happen. So, just thought I'd share those mistakes with you. Um, here I have a quite a nice little, um, quite a nice little jug, which I'm quite pleased with. I quite like it. It's quite lively. I like the decoration. Um, this is was a pot that was biscuit fired and and then just glazed on the inside and over the rim and on the handle. That's the only glaze that's on it. The rest of it is iron oxide, which I've just, with a brush, just brushed on. Um, and this gives uh, a very crisp, clean, um, I like the contrast between the iron oxide and the, and the, the toasty clay body. Remember, we were doing reduction firing, so it, it tends to turn our clay quite a nice toasty colour, because it's got some iron oxide in it, in the, in the actual clay body itself. So that that's a, a not a very difficult decoration to do. It can and it can look quite impressive. Um, you can take a pot and with a with the iron oxide just do several brush strokes, reload the brush, and chick 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 chick, and they're dancing around there. They look quite animated. I quite like that. So that's that's that. And then I wanted to show you uh, the bowl that people had asked to to see the finished one. Now you've seen me throw this bowl, you saw me turn the bowl here and I glazed it and, and you've seen me decorating it. Again with red iron oxide applied but this time not on top of the on top of the directly on top of the clay but on top of this um, whitey grey glaze which I'm going to give you the recipe for in a minute, so get a pen handy. Um, so it's quite a useful glaze, uh, fires up to about 1280, 1290, 1300, quite happy at reason, reasonably high temperature. And um, so I'll give you the recipe for that. One of my, my dad's. Um, problem is I use too many of my dad's recipes. <laughs> I've got to... Um, I've actually made a small test kiln, which I'm going to make make a video clip of, and um, I'm, I'm wanting to go out into the into into nature and round about the locality and and get some um, raw materials and test test them in the test kiln and make my own glazes because I think it's important to do that. I'll give just give you the recipe for that. Um, I can find it here in the book. Keep a book like this for glaze recipes and things. It's useful to, to have. Okay, this glaze is, is called PB. Um, and you can use it with or without 
red iron oxide. If you have with, without red iron oxide, it comes out this colour, which is again the same the same glaze that is on that jug, okay? But you can decorate on top of it, or you can add red red iron oxide, and then it comes at like a celadon colour, a greeny colour, in reduction atmosphere. Okay, so we start off with potassium uh, potash feldspar, three pounds and fourteen ounces. Whiting, one pound and fourteen ounces. Talc, one pound and two ounces. China clay, two pounds and two ounces. And quartz, four pounds. There's a lot of quartz in there. And then, if you want the celadon with the red iron oxide, four ounces of red iron oxide in a reduction atmosphere will give you a celadon. Okay. So. Um, if you've got those ingredients to hand, have a go, mix up a small batch and um, give it a whiz. As I say, you do need a reduction atmosphere and um, you need to be able to reach 1300 degrees. Okay folks, that's it for now. Stay tuned, we'll have some more later. Bye now.